Hi, I'm John Grievenkamp, and I'm at the College of Optical Sciences at the University of Arizona. And it's really a pleasure to be here at SPIE's Optics and Photonics meeting. And one of the things we've been able to do this week is to bring part of the collection of antique optical instruments we have at the College of Optical Sciences here to share with the optics, the broader optics community as part of the celebration of the 400 year of 400th anniversary of astronomy and the 400th anniversary of the invention of the telescope. The telescopes we brought here to San Diego date from around 1700 to about 1900. Uh, I do want to show you a couple of particular instruments, uh, particular telescopes that I find particularly interesting. Uh, the first is the one that's standing right here. And this is a uh, reflecting telescope uh, made by Nairn in London. It dates from around 1770. And what's really interesting about it is the fact that uh, at this particular period of time, to make the mirrors for the telescope, the technology for coating glass that we do today did not exist. So the mirrors in this telescope are actually metal mirrors, and it's a metal uh, called speculum, which is an alloy of copper and tin with some arsenic in it. And what they were doing was trying to balance out the alloy to get good reflectivity and to prevent um, corrosion to the mirror surface to get high reflectivity. Uh, this particular telescope um, is a twin of a telescope that's actually on display at the Greenwich Observatory over in England. One of the earlier telescopes in our collection dating from the early 1700s is this Italian telescope. Now the form of this telescope technically is a relayed Keplerian telescope. So it's an objective lens with relay lenses to erect the image followed by an eyepiece consisting of a field lens and an eye lens. So it really is already in the modern form of the telescope. Uh, what's interesting about this is the materials that are used. Uh, this particular telescope um, has paper or cardboard tubes that are wrapped in either uh, vellum or leather and are highly decorated. Um, the fittings on the ends of the telescope are on this particular telescope are in fact turned horn. Yes, horn, um, H-O-R-N. Um, and what we're really looking at it with some of these telescopes is not only the evolution of the optics, but the evolution of the materials used in the, the uh, fabrication of telescopes. Uh, one of the interesting things to remember is that brass tubing, which of course we're all very familiar with in telescope uh, fabrication, really didn't become widely available and practical until about 1750. So around 1750, you actually see a transition from cardboard and paper tubing to brass tubing. Most of the telescopes we have on display here, even though we tend to couple telescopes with astronomy, most of the telescopes manufactured were never used for astronomy. Their primary purpose was nautical and military. Now generally when we talk about telescopes, we talk about the big long telescopes with lots of magnification, but there's actually a whole other class of telescopes um, that's, that's actually pretty remarkable in the collection as well. And these are actually the little Galilean um, opera glasses or monoculars. Now this particular one is dates from about 1770, and this is one of my favorite pieces in the entire collection. Uh, the barrel is tortoiseshell enamel. And if you look carefully at this, the, the rest of the, the, the telescope is done in silver, and it's finely tooled silver. Um, so for some people, the, this would this have been the kind of telescope that would have gone to the opera, so you can see a little closer. But for some of the telescopes, they actually became almost jewelry and really decorative. So I think that's also another aspect of, of the entire collection that's very nice. This telescope even came with its own little case, and the, the case has silver, um, highlights, but it's covered in a material called chagrin, and chagrin is shark skin. So this is another example of part of the collection we have. Now I would like to remind everybody that the collection we've brought here to San Diego is actually on permanent display at the College of Optical Sciences in Tucson. It's displayed around the building, and everyone's welcome to come during business hours. It's open to the public. Um, and we'd enjoy a visit from you in Tucson. So thank you very much.